Thank you for watching. Over the next several minutes, we'll be covering the basics of operating your Volvo truck. Volvo trucks are engineered and manufactured with you, the driver, in mind. They incorporate the latest technology and are built to be more fuel efficient, safer, and easier to service. With spacious, handsomely appointed cabs, Volvo trucks are designed to make you feel at home, on the road, or on the job. With their innovative styling, unmatched safety features, and advanced SCR engines, Volvo trucks offer unique advantages you'll appreciate every time you climb into the cab. This program will provide you with a high-level operational overview for Volvo trucks, including the cab and sleeper interior and exterior features and operation, the Volvo EPA 2010 engine, and the SCR system and its operation, and the on-road operation of the Volvo Enhanced Cruise, Volvo Engine Brake, and the Volvo iShift. Let's climb in. Now, when entering and exiting the cab, always face the vehicle and have at least three limbs in contact with the vehicle or the ground at all times. Let's start by looking at the cab interior. Volvo truck cabs incorporate exceptional room, comfort, and ergonomics with the highest standards of fit and finish. The instrument cluster encompasses the gauges, driver information display, or DID, and telltales and is located directly in front of the driver. The large, easy-to-read displays and gauges help keep you focused on the road ahead. The telltale indicators are located in the top center and at the bottom of the instrument panel. A telltale indicates the actuation of a device, a correct or defective condition, or a function failure. For example, the electronic malfunction light, the engine shutdown indicator, park brake, and the turn signals are all telltale indicators. When the ignition key is turned on, certain telltale lights will light up for a short period of time as each system check is run, about three to six seconds, and then go out. This shows that the indicators themselves are working and that the functions and devices they represent are working as well. You are probably familiar with most of these indicators already, and the operator's manual has a complete list of each indicator and its function, so we won't go into what each one means. However, when you see any of these indicators light up, you'll need to take immediate action. For example, if the engine preheat indicator lights up, the engine intake preheater is on. You should wait until the light goes off to start the engine. If the check indicator comes on, you can keep driving as long as there is no substantial power loss, but the vehicle should be brought in for service as soon as it is convenient. The red stop indicator illuminates if there is a problem with a major engine system, such as low coolant level, low oil pressure, or high water temperature. All of these conditions require you to safely park your vehicle and shut down the engine. The driver information display, or DID, is located in the center of the cluster and is controlled by a multi-purpose stock. The Enter button is used to display a list of menus, open a menu, and select the highlighted area. The Up arrow button is used to scroll up through a menu. The Down arrow button is used to scroll down through a menu. The ESC or Escape button is used to return to the previous menu or display. You can select Favorite Gauge Displays, allowing you to see the options most important to you. The DID can be toggled between the favorite displays and the menu screen by pressing the escape button on the stock. The clock time in the DID is set using the stock switch lever, the high version of the sleeper control panel, and the radios that have Bluetooth use the clock setting as their source. To the left of the DID is the after treatment diesel exhaust fluid or after treatment DEF tank gauge. Just below and to the left of the DEF tank gauge is the amber DEF warning light, which will illuminate when the DEF level is too low. Occasionally, you may see the malfunction indicator lamp illuminate. This indicates that the onboard diagnostic system needs to be accessed for information. As part of the requirements in EPA 2010, engine manufacturers must monitor the condition of the engine after treatment system, also known as EATS. The Selective Catalytic Reduction, or SCR system, is monitored to determine if any tampering has occurred. 
If the wiring has been compromised, a sensor failed or tampering detected in the engine after treatment system or EATS, the driver will be given three indicators, a solid DEF light, audible warning, and the DID message will read SCR system fault, engine will derate. You may use the DID stalk controls to acknowledge and eliminate the reminders temporarily, but the EAT system will need to be restored for the reminders to be eliminated or to eliminate the derate trigger. On the back of the sun visor, there's a decal that lists the SCR and DPF information and the actions required of you, the driver. Performance Bonus is an onboard system that rewards the driver for operating the truck efficiently. The system eliminates factors that are out of the driver's control, such as payload, weather, wind, temperature, topography, seasonal variations, etc. The performance bonus does a few things. It guides the driver with icons in the driver information display to operate in the engine's most efficient RPM range, called the sweet spot. It totals the amount of fuel consumed in the sweet spot and compares it to the total amount of fuel consumed over the same distance. It is presented as the percent sweet spot. The higher the number, the better. It compares the target idle time to the actual idle time. The lower the number, the better. It compares the target MPG to the actual MPG. The higher the number, the better. Performance Bonus Guide displays any one of the following icons in the bottom bar of the DID. The Performance Bonus Guide icons will indicate to you when and how much to apply the throttle and whether to upshift or downshift. The double dollars icon means the engine is operating in the most efficient area of the sweet spot. The single dollars icon means the engine is operating in a less efficient area of the sweet spot. The RPM up icon means increase engine speed by downshifting or applying more throttle. The RPM down icon means decrease engine speed by upshifting or applying less throttle. The pedal up icon means back off on the throttle. The pedal down icon means apply more throttle. These icons will only display when the truck speed is above 20 miles per hour. Let's look at the steering wheel. The tilt steering wheel and telescopic steering column adjust for optimum driver comfort. Plus, they collapse to absorb energy and reduce the risk of injury in a crash. To adjust the tilt and telescope position of the steering wheel, push down the adjustment pedal and move the wheel to a comfortable, safe position. Note that you need to continue to hold down the pedal while adjusting the steering wheel. Never adjust the steering wheel while the vehicle is moving. The steering wheel and stock switches and controls allow you to operate frequently used controls without taking your eyes off the road. Volvo's standard equipment radios include the ability to connect a Bluetooth phone, allowing for hands-free operation. Once the cell phone is initially synchronized with the truck, the phone will automatically sync up with the truck every time it's inside the cab. When a call comes in, the DID will display the incoming call information and the audio volume from an audio source CD or radio will automatically mute. The optional steering wheel with radio controls can be used to answer and disconnect calls. When you're finished with the call, the audio source volume will return to normal. This hands-free communication is supported by a microphone located in the overhead console and through the audio system. If the truck has a Bluetooth-equipped radio without the steering wheel controls, use the controls on the mobile phone to answer and disconnect calls. Electric and air horns are standard equipment on all Volvo trucks, both horns are operated from the steering wheel. The airbag can be pressed down anywhere around the edge to engage the air horn, which is the more powerful sounding horn. The electric horn, or city horn, is activated using either of the two buttons at the bottom of the steering wheel. The optional hand control brake lever is on the right. Pull it down to activate the trailer or rear axle service brakes, depending on your vehicle. The wiper washer control lever is the large stock on the right-hand side of the steering column. The wipers have normal and fast speeds, which are activated by moving the lever down one or two positions. To let the wipers engage for a few passes, lightly depress the lever until the wipers start and hold it there. 
the wipers return to the parking position when the lever is released. The interval wiper function is engaged by moving the lever up. The normal program speed is one pass every 10 seconds. To shorten the interval time, move the lever to normal wipe position and then back to the interval position again. The interval can be programmed between 1 to 10 seconds between each pass. To operate the windshield washer, pull the lever toward the steering wheel. If washer fluid needs to be added, use a commercially reputable washer fluid that has good cleaning capability and does not freeze in cold weather. An indicator will appear in the DID when the washer fluid level is low. The dash consists of four panels, A, B, C, and D. The wraparound section of the dash on the right side houses the B panel with locations for a number of optional switches that may be included in this part of the panel, such as the fifth wheel position lock, traction control, etc. The operator's manual has a complete list of the optional switches and their functions. Volvo trucks and tractors may have two air control valves on the instrument panel. Trailer supply, red octagonal knob. System park, yellow diamond knob. After sufficient air pressure is built up, be sure to apply the foot brake to prevent the vehicle from rolling. The yellow system park valve knob should be pushed in first. The red trailer air supply valve knob may then be pushed in. The trailer air supply valve knob and system park valve knob will automatically pop out if the system pressure drops to 25 to 35 PSI. The tractor protection valve will then close, the tractor spring brakes will apply, and the trailer emergency system will be activated. On vehicles equipped with the standard two-valve system, the operation of one valve together with the other permits the operator to select these desired functions. Refer to your operator's manual for more information. The stock on the left side of the steering wheel has the cruise control buttons that turn the cruise control on, set the cruise speed, resume speed, accelerate, and decelerate. If the vehicle is equipped with the optional Volvo Enhanced Cruise or VEC, it will provide warnings when the truck is too close to a vehicle it is following or if there is a vehicle on the right side of the truck. VEC will help maintain a safe following distance from vehicles ahead of the truck. It reduces the engine speed applies the engine brake, downshifts automated manual transmissions like the I-shift transmission, and will apply up to one-third of the service braking force if needed. VEC's application of service brakes will disengage the cruise control. Remember to re-engage the cruise control when it is safe to do so. As you can see, VEC is an active safety feature that provides a series of warnings and sequential actions to help you maintain a safe distance from other vehicles. We'll talk more about VEC and other Volvo active safety systems when we take a look at the on-road operation. The directional indicator controls are also by the left stock. These may be canceling or non-canceling depending on the option selected. Volvo trucks have several models of radio available that are Bluetooth equipped as standard equipment. These radios provide high quality audio AM, FM, and NOAA weather band radio and allow you to save up to 18 FM and 6 AM stations. And they have an integrated CD player. Traffic and news information are available to keep you informed while on the road. Any radio with the USB AUX option will have the speed dependent volume feature. Radio volume is speed dependent and automatically adjusts based on your road speed. You can connect an MP3 player using the N AUX or USB connection. A connector harness is also available for iPods, which allows your music to play through the audio system while also charging your iPod. The time that is displayed on the radio is broadcast from the instrument cluster. To change the time displayed in the clock, the setting will need to be set in the instrument cluster. When the ignition is on and the radio is off, the time of day is displayed in the clock. When the radio is on, the default display will be the audio function that was last operating. The Volvo Electronic Climate Control, or ECC, creates an optimum in-cab climate. All you have to do is set the temperature control knob at the desired level, set the fan speed and air distribution knobs to the AUT positions, and the system takes care of itself. 
The ECC automatically controls the cab temperature, air distribution, fan speed, and fresh air intake accordingly. The ECC also allows the driver to manually select the desired fan speed and air distribution settings for the cabin climate control. Note that if the AC light in the switch is off, the air conditioner is operational. The Volvo manual climate control does not have the AUT settings. This system delivers the desired air temperature that will remain constant according to settings of the temperature control knob. Set the air distribution knob to the desired mode of airflow. Move the temperature control knob to the blue bar for cool air to circulate in the cab or to the red bar for warm to hot air to circulate in the cab. Use the fan speed knob to set fan speed from 1 to 4. Note that in the Volvo MCC, if the AC light in the switch is on, the air conditioner is operational. Note for both climate control systems, after a predetermined number of vehicle starts, the climate unit will recalibrate the door positions, which may take several seconds before the airflow returns to the selected distribution mode. The last item to note in the dash is the electrical distribution center or fuse panel. Located in the middle of the dash, it provides access to fuses and circuits. To access the fuses, pull the cup holder out to expose the fastening screws, back the screws out using a screwdriver, or use a coin in the large slot in the screw head. With the screws backed out, the panel can be removed. The fuse diagram can be found on the underside of the cover panel. Circuit descriptions are printed on the back of the access panel, and fuses are positioned for easy replacement. Replace fuses and circuit breakers with the same current rating. The seat belt and airbag create a zone of protection for the driver. To fasten the safety belt, pull the belt out from the retractor and insert the latch into the buckle and adjust the comfort clip for your preference. In the event of a crash, the three-point seat belt holds fast and the standard driver's side airbag may deploy. In the event of a frontal crash, the engine mounts are designed to release the engine and transmission down under the chassis rather than pushing it into the driver's compartment. The one-piece windshield provides an unobstructed view of the road ahead, and its roped-in installation assures that the windshield does not affect cab strength. In the event of a crash, the windshield can be kicked out and used as an escape route. All Volvo trucks are also equipped with an anti-lock braking system that provides greater control during emergency braking. Another standard safety feature is Volvo Enhanced Stability Technology, or VEST, which reduces the likelihood of a rollover, jackknife, or loss of control on both wet and dry roads. VEST continuously monitors a variety of vehicle parameters and sensors, including a steering angle sensor, to determine whether the vehicle is reaching critical stability threshold. At that point, VEST is designed to intervene by instantly dethrottling the engine as it applies the engine brake and applies individual tractor and trailer brakes as needed to regain control. Drivers like you who have tested this system found that VEST is able to respond more quickly and accurately to a situation than they can, often intervening before they're even aware there's a problem. One other feature that is important to note is the optional pre-trip assistant. This will help you complete your vehicle pre-trip inspection. The pre-trip assistant checks the continuity of specific external lighting electrical circuits, cycles the external lights on and off so you can see them cycling as you inspect the truck during your walk around. And back in the cab, it also helps check for air leaks using a 60-second air brake system test. Using the stock control, Select Pre-Trip Assistant from the main menu in the DID and follow the prompts. The initial pre-trip screen displays switch status. The switch circuit status check tests the functionality of the switches and their corresponding circuits. To start the check, the driver must turn the individual switches on and off. As the switches turn on or off, the cluster updates the DID to show the switch being tested and its status. The following switches can be checked, service brake, turn signals, hazard, light control panel, and high or low beam switch. After the diagnostic is completed, the screen displays detailing the status of each switch. 
The exterior light inspection check cycles specific vehicle and coupled trailer exterior lights on and off. The following exterior lights are cycled through the check. High and low beam headlights, parking lights, parking and side marker lights, hazard, turn signal and if equipped, fog and driving lights, and tail and brake lights. Stop the test by pressing escape on the stock or by starting the engine. The air leakage check allows the driver to accurately measure the amount of air pressure drop in the front and rear brake air systems. Start the engine and check that the brake pressure gauges are greater than 100 PSI. Turn the engine off. Release the park and trailer brakes and allow the system to settle and the air gauge needle to stop moving. Press and hold the brake pedal for a total of 60 seconds. Once the brake pressure test is completed, the pressure leak test results are displayed in the DID. Note that the pre-trip assistant is not a substitute for a complete pre-trip inspection. So far, we've looked at the cab in terms of the driver experience. Now let's look at the sleeper cab. The sleeper area includes one or more bunks, plus room for amenities, including a refrigerator and TV DVD. Generous cabinets are available with securely closing doors. Lighting and temperature control panels are located in the sleeper, as well as on the dash. And a sleeper curtain, plus available wraparound windshield curtain, assure privacy and a good night's sleep. There are two different configurations for the lower bunk. A one-piece cover for the luggage compartments with a one-piece mattress, or a two-piece luggage compartment cover and a folding table with a four-piece mattress. The two-piece luggage compartment covers have an access door under each of the table seating areas, allowing access to each side of the luggage compartment. The available table provides comfortable seating for two people, and the table can easily be folded away if the bottom bunk is being used for overnight accommodation. To lower the table, place the seat cushions to the sides and pull the handle underneath the tabletop to release the latches. Lower the table to its resting position and then place the seat cushions across the platform to create a mattress. To raise the table, place the seat cushions to the sides. Raise the table to its upper position and line up the latch pegs with the holes in the back wall. Push the table firmly into the holes. Make sure the latches are properly secured by pulling out on the table. When the table is in place, put the cushions in place to form a seat and backrest. The upper bunk can be a fixed or hinged design. The hinged bunk can be raised up out of the way. The VN780 has latches on both sides of the wall that hold the bunk in position. When the bunk is raised and latched, make sure that the latches on both sides close and hold the bunk securely. To release the latches, pull the latch strap in the middle of the bunk underside. Anytime a person is in the upper bunk, the safety harness must be used by the occupant. Mounted under the bunk in the luggage compartment is the Xantrex Freedom HF1800 inverter charger. The unit provides 1800 watts of continuous output power as well as a temperature controlled 40 amp three-stage charger to ensure that the batteries are charged safely and efficiently. The display panel is mounted on the sleeper wall, making it easy to switch it off and on. When the truck is supplied with external shore power, at a truck stop for example, the inverter charger takes the incoming power and recharges the batteries back to full capacity. While the batteries are charging, the system seamlessly transmits shore power to any AC loads plugged into the 120 volt AC outlets in the truck. The unit only operates as a charger when it is connected to shore power. If shore power is not connected, the inverter charger will draw 12 volts DC power from the truck's batteries inverting it to provide power to the 120 volt AC outlets in the sleeper. The control panel for the inverter charger is located on the driver's side wall of the sleeper compartment. This equipment contains components which tend to produce arcs or sparks. Do not put any flammable liquids or materials in the luggage compartment with the Xantrex inverter charger. 
While the inverter charger is using the 12-volt DC power from the truck's batteries to power the 120-volt AC outlets, it's important to turn off unnecessary devices to preserve battery power and reduce fuel consumption when driving. The sleeper compartment has a control panel mounted on the driver's side wall to control the various functions in the sleeper. There are two versions of the sleeper control panel, high and basic. Both sleeper control panels have controls for optional parking heater, clock alarm and timer, the low voltage disconnect or LVD, panic switch, and the auxiliary HVAC system. The high version of the sleeper control module also has controls for the in-dash radio, including power on and off, a mode switch, forward and reverse scan, search and next station set, and volume control. A battery protection override control is also included on the high sleeper control panel. The sleeper environment controls are separate from the driving environment controls, allowing you to independently set both environments to your liking. An additional auxiliary HVAC fan speed switch located on the right side of the steering column controls the four-speed fan in the sleeper. The overhead sleeper light switch is located on the left side of the steering column. The panic button, located on the sleeper control panel, activates the electric horn for five seconds to warn off potential intruders and attract attention. The panic button must be enabled for 2.5 seconds for the horn to sound. This delay avoids an unattended activation of the horn. The horn will sound for several seconds and then shut off automatically. The optional parking heater can be controlled by the sleeper control panel. This lightweight cab parking heater is compact and quiet, providing engine off heat on demand and producing comfortable sleeper heat for up to 20 hours on one gallon of diesel fuel. It's mounted behind the bulkhead on the driver's side in the sleeper storage compartment. There are two operating modes for the parking heater, auto and cycle. Auto mode allows the driver to set scheduled start and stop times for the heater. Cycle mode allows the driver to set the heater to cycle on and off to avoid running the batteries down with continual running. Refer to your operator's manual for additional instructions on how to operate the sleeper control panel. The optional Dometic battery-powered air conditioning system provides cooling when the truck engine is off. The Dometic battery-powered air conditioning system has been designed to provide trouble-free performance under severe environmental conditions and will keep you comfortable without running your truck's engine with a minimum of regular maintenance. Your battery-powered HVAC from Dometic is a patented split system consisting of two separate modules. The outside condensing unit is mounted on the back of the cab or sleeper. The inside unit includes the compressor, evaporator, and blower. It's mounted under the bunk. The system uses a digital control panel. Operation is intuitive and easy, with plus and minus indicators to adjust the set point. An inverter converts 12-volt DC power from the batteries to 120-volt AC power to run the air conditioner. Your system includes seven to eight absorbed glass mat, or AGM, batteries, which provide sufficient power to run your air conditioning system for 10 hours or more without running your truck's engine. There are four batteries on the rail under the driver's side door. The additional batteries, along with the inverter, are mounted in a box between the rails or on the frame rail. The system also includes a high-capacity alternator mounted on the truck's engine. This alternator is designed to bring the batteries back to full charge within six hours of continuous running of the truck. Your system may also have an optional shore power connection, which allows you to run the air conditioner from a remote 120-volt AC power source. In this section, we'll give you a guided tour of your control panel keypad. The large LED readout indicates current inside temperature, current set point, temperature selection, programmed values, and fault error messages. The mode key enables you to cycle through the different modes. The mode sequence is off, cool, heat, and auto. The heat mode is disabled in the Volvo factory installation. The cool mode indicator lights when cool mode is manually selected or when the compressor is on during auto mode. 
the auto indicator lights when the system is in automatic changeover mode. This function is disabled on your system since it does not have electric heat installed. Finally, the off indicator lights when the system is de-energized by pressing the mode key. The data display remains on. Set point adjustments, temperature displays, and manual fan controls remain active when the system is in the off mode. The plus and minus keys are used to raise or lower the set point. The fan key selects manual fan control or the auto mode. In the off mode, pressing this key will start the fan in manual mode. To adjust the brightness of the control panel, press the mode and plus keys simultaneously. Subsequent presses will adjust the LED to high, medium, and low brightness. You can select Fahrenheit or Celsius temperature readouts using special codes. See your operator's manual for instructions. In this section, we'll take you through the process of entering the cool mode, adjusting the set point, and setting the fan speed. Before you cycle your air conditioning system on, make sure your truck engine is off and the key is in the off or accessory position. The system will not engage if your truck engine is running or the key is in the on position. Before activating your air conditioning system, you must turn on the inverter. The green light on the inverter control panel will come on immediately. There's a 15 second delay before power is sent to the air conditioning control panel. Note that if you have a shore power hookup and combination inverter charger unit, there is also a red light on the inverter control panel, which comes on whenever shore power is connected and passing through the inverter charger. Your display panel will show the current inside temperature. To enter the cool mode, press the mode key until the cool LED lights. Note that the internal temperature must be above the set point by approximately 3 degrees before the compressor is engaged and cooling begins. At this point, a dot will be illuminated in the upper left corner of the display, indicating the compressor is on. When the ambient temperature equals the set point, the compressor is de-energized and the dot will disappear. When the compressor cycles off, a two-minute compressor delay is initiated. When the compressor is called to run again, it will be delayed for the remaining time left in the two-minute delay. To adjust the set point, press either the plus or minus key once and the set point will be displayed. Press either key again to change the set point. While in set point mode, a dot will appear in the top middle of the display. After three seconds of no key presses, the new set point is applied. The dot disappears in the display and the current inside temperature is shown. The default position for the fan speed is auto mode. When the fan button is pressed, the fan will go to manual operation at speed 1, low speed. Press the fan key again to move the fan speed up one speed at a time until speed 3 is reached, high speed, and then it will move down one speed at a time until speed 1 is reached. Your control panel contains built-in safeguards designed to protect the air conditioning system from damaging conditions. If an operational failure occurs, your control panel will flash a fault code message. Fault or error code messages are canceled by pressing the mode key. If this happens, contact your service technician. If your battery voltage levels are too low to run the air conditioning system, the inverter will automatically switch off to ensure you retain sufficient battery power to crank your engine. If this happens, the green light on the inverter control panel will change from green to orange. Low battery voltage may also trigger a fault code indicating high AC on your Dometic control panel display. You should start the truck's engine and recharge the batteries, or switch to shore power if available. The refrigerator freezer is another feature that provides you with at-home comfort. It's equipped with heavy-duty shelves that provide space for gallon jugs, door storage for 2-liter bottles, and more. The separate freezer section is large enough to hold several standard frozen dinners or snacks in addition to the ice tray. The refrigerator has a low amperage draw with compressor protection. There's no need to worry about the door opening during travel. A safety pin keeps the door secured. 
Another at-home convenience you may not want to be without while on the road is a TV. To make it easy for you to add a TV to the sleeper cab, Volvo offers an optional TV prep kit. The prep kit includes a TV antenna and 12-volt wiring, which makes it easy to connect your TV without additional modifications. <laughs>